Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you are having a fantastic day. My friends, I tell you, I'm excited about the things that are going on, but I must admit, in, in addition to my excitement, I am concerned. I find myself at times asking myself, is this still America? When I see what's going on in Afghanistan, when I see what's going on in our country, this cancel culture, when I see how the government first uh, used the incentive base to get people to take the shot, and now they are using a punitive approach. Can you believe it? A punitive approach to get people to coordinate people to do something that they want people to do that grown people with a brain feels uh, uncomfortable doing. We're living in a time where we are teaching uh, people through uh, various teachings that Christianity is tantamount to oppression. I want to warn my, my black brothers and sisters out there who are watching today, listen, don't you get involved in anything that teaches that because you are a Christian, you are an oppressor. That's the spirit of Antichrist. That's, that's the devil's way of trying to drive a wedge between us and Jesus. And I'll tell you something, my friends, make no mistake about it. I am more faithful to the Lord than I am to my complexion and the melanin, uh, melanin that's in my skin. I am a Christian and I'm born again. And I thank God. Someone said one time uh, that I am, a, uh, they were speaking for themselves that I'm an African-American who, who happens to be a Christian. No, not me. I didn't happen to be a Christian. I made a choice on being a Christian. <laughs> I had no choice about being the color that I am. I had no choice with my sex. Now, mind you, I wouldn't change a thing. I love being a black brother, and I love being a man. But I made Jesus my choice, and I love nothing like I love serving the Lord. Now, my point that I'm making today is I'm concerned about all of these things and the cumulative effect of these things that's taking place in the world. But I want to tell the believers that we have a hiding place and that with all of the fights that are going on in the world today, God has called us to fight the right fight the right way. And if we fight and engage in the right fight, the right way, then we are going to walk in victory. And the God of the Bible is going to bless us real good. As a matter of fact, I'll be talking about that tonight. So I want you to come out and join me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And the Lord is going to bless us. Saints, I tell you, I'm so excited about the things that take place. Oh, we've had people even in our uh, uh, Thursday night services to drive down as far, as far as from Baltimore, Maryland to be in the live services. People want to, people want to hear the word of the Lord. I will share this coming Sunday and show the people um, a, a, a book, a portion of a video and some posters that were sent to me uh, uh, when we were doing some studies and showing the people about the, 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 the rock that Moses hit, that he split. I've heard from the family that rediscovered that rock in Saudi Arabia, Arabia and uh, they watched the broadcast. They saw the things that we were saying and and they were appreciative of the things that we had to say, and it blessed them, and hearing from them certainly has blessed me. What is my point? There is a market for God's truth. People want the Bible. The answers is the word of God. And my friends, don't you let anybody separate you from the word of the Lord. Now, as you notice, I got some, I got uh, uh, almost many me with me today. I got a little bobblehead. I've never had a bobblehead before. But uh, one of the brothers uh, who is an employee here, Brother Xavier, I, I thought it was so nice of him. Uh, he took, had several pictures of me and sent them to the to the uh, to the uh, the manufacturers of these things and and had them to uh, uh, make a bob a bobblehead in my likeness and I want to just send a shout out 
uh, to him and to his lovely wife and family and let them know how much I, I uh, appreciate just the kind gesture. He did it for my birthday. I'm a big believer. I say this all the time. People don't have to be kind. People don't have to do a thing. And and anytime, my friend, someone is, is shows you kindness or they, they does something or, or they put forth some gesture to, to, to let you know that you mean something to them, always be thankful, always be appreciative because, listen, people don't have to be. Now, I want you to join me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I am excited about the things that God has to say, and I'm concerned. One of the reasons, as I close, you know, I get, I get long-winded with these things, but listen, listen. One of the largest Christian communities in the Middle East, one of the largest Muslim communities, uh, one of the largest Muslim cities, countries that have uh, a large number of Christians in it is Afghanistan. And let me tell you something. We need to be praying for our brothers and sisters over there. If you are halfway fair, and I'm not speaking from a Republican standpoint of view, nor a Democrat one, I personally am neither, but you have to be moved by the mess that we're in, this shameful debacle that is taking place. And as sure as my name is Patrick Wooden, they're going to leave people over there who need to be rescued. Afghanis who worked with us, some are US citizens, some are green card holders, and the chaos that's taking place. But my friends, in addition to people being Afghanis, uh, uh, green card holders, U.S. citizens, many of those people, my friends, that we're looking at on the news are our Christian brothers and sisters. And I don't know how you can be a Christian and not be concerned about the plight of other Christians. If those Christians are left there, uh, the Taliban will kill them and they will die a horrible death. Those Christians are dying for what they believe. And yet at the same time in America, we find Christians uh, who will fight to stay out of church, fight to stay away from the house of God, fight to stay away because they're scared of a virus that has taken the lives of less than 1% of the people who have been affected by it worldwide. You have to admit there's something wrong with that. I pray that you will pray about the people in Afghanistan, that you would pray that God touch our president, that he does the right thing. Don't, don't let the 31st be it. Rescue those people. They put their lives on the line to save Americans. And I want to say to those who are part of the armed services, especially our veterans who participated in the Afghan war, we've been there for 20 years and uh, you fought. I want to say to you, I want to join the voices that, that are saying to you, uh, your labor was not in vain. The Gold Star families whose, whose sons, whose daughters went to Afghanistan and never came back. The labor was not in vain. And there are people who appreciate what you did and the sacrifice that you made. And we're praying for you. There's a lot of angry veterans. There's a lot of angry people who, they're not, a, they're not upset that we had to bring it to a close. They're not upset that at, that, that a certain point, that at a certain point, it was time to pull out. But it's how things have been done. And uh, I, I think that th those of us who are from, uh, civilians, we're stateside, and I thank God I'm in America. I thank God, although I'm concerned about the things that are going on, I thank God that I'm here. We can, however, pray. If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, the God of the Bible said, then will I hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal the land. He's still a land healer.
Now, I know that we've, we've taken, many have shifted their faith. We no longer have faith in Christianity, and, and many now are putting their faith in science. But I'm telling you, I hadn't made that shift. I still believe that the God of the Bible is the land healer. He can heal uh, everything, every malady that exists. God's a healer. And there are times when he flexes his muscles and shows his ability to heal. And there are other times when God passes judgment and people leave here. I trust the Lord. I know that God knows what he's doing. He loves you. He loves me. He's going to see us through. But we got to stay with him. And we got to fight the right fight the right way. I'm going to talk about it tonight. Join me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. You guessed it. Yes. All of this excitement about Bible study. Tonight, we are going to study the word of the Lord together. I love you. May God's choice blessings be yours. Everyone in the surrounding areas, come to church. Those who are too far away, join us online Make sure you have your pen and pencils out. We're going to walk in the scriptures and God's going to bless us real good.